Alright, what's going on everybody? Rat Wrench is back for another video. Today we have the 2017 Dodge Ram 1500. This is the 5.7. Um, we're going to do another mod. If you haven't seen this um, truck on our channel, definitely click up above. We have a whole playlist full of a bunch of mods, aesthetics. As you can see, we got different tires and rims. Um, but today we're going to be doing power stop brake kits. They're drilled and slotted rotors with ceramic brake pads. We got them for the front and rear. This truck has around 60,000 miles and it's all on stock components, so it's probably due, well it is due, from the noises we're hearing and just the lack of stopping ability. It's due for an upgrade, so we decided to do some drilled and slot it. But um, if you guys are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Please hit that subscribe button, give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or concerns or comments or anything like that, just comment down below. We'll be sure to answer them for you, but without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so we're going to do a little unboxing clip down here. Oh. They all came in this box and it's extremely heavy and a very flimsy box. I'm surprised they didn't fall out. Alright. One good thing about them is they do uh, label everything, so I mean it's pretty easy to tell which rotors go where. Completely different sizes. Alright, here I'll just pull out the brakes here. You can see it comes with all the hardware you need and some ceramic pads. It even comes with the grease, that's nice of them. Um, you got the grommets, the retaining clips, and then you got the pads there. Those are most likely going to be the fronts. And then the rears, of course, are going to be smaller. You got the clips, grommets again, some more grease. Oh, are they actually almost the same size? Yeah. Alright, so these could be the fronts too, I'm not exactly sure. That's my first time doing on this uh, truck, so just so you get an idea of what we're working with. You got the nice drill holes and the slots. Here's a front passenger side. Damn, that's some heavy duty right there. These are going to be great to stop those big tire and wheel setup we have. Well, um, all right, let's get into it. We're going to unbox them, lay them out where they need to go, and get to it. All right, so I'm not going to really film taking off these wheels. Um, we have these covers here. I'm not sure what your exact setup is, but these are just the Allen keys. So I'm going to go ahead and take them all off while he preps everything up to get the truck lifted up in the air, and then we'll start removing the lugs. We got the wheel off, as you can see. Now we're going to get ready to this. If you have a lifted truck, we have the um, level kit, so it kind of lifts up. Of course, with the tires and everything, it makes it a little harder to lift up. We don't have a truck jack because most of our vehicles are cars. We didn't want to use the pins, so we used the frame under there. We went to the lowest point, so we had more clearance to go up. Originally, we were, we're going to go in the middle, so we get both wheels up and expedite the process, but unfortunately, we don't have the right jack. So we're going to do one wheel at a time. Um, now what we're going to want to do is take a... 21 millimeter and break the bracket loose which holds the whole caliper assembly in but before we do that we want to take off the um, 13 millimeter and just break the um, slide pins loose that one there and then the ones right here break those loose and then that 21 for the bracket is right here and then the one on top yourself a nice electronic ratchet it makes life so much easier this is going to spin on the back side you can either put a wrench on that or you could just push it up against that so we're not just spinning and not making progress see what i mean down there uh, this one i'm probably gonna need a wrench all right so we got um those 13s out get just like a screwdriver just to pry this out of the way we're gonna rest that there. You don't want to kink the brake hose or anything like that. But let's check these pads out first. Eh, I still have some life on them. But oh well. Time for an upgrade. Now you could really take these off when you take the whole bracket off, but I just wanted to show you for informational purposes now. Let's break this thing. We already broke a little, so I'm just gonna take them off. All right, and these are those two mounting bolts, those two right there. They hold this uh, 
right here to here. Since it's probably on there, we're gonna take a hammer and just hit the sides. It's okay if you hit these, just do not hit the studs because you're replacing this. So if you hit it here, it doesn't really matter, but that's gonna break it loose. So I'm gonna get a hammer and just swing away. get a bigger hammer. There we go. That's all it took. Those little stoppers that pop right off. You could just force these off for some reason. They're not working with me today. You got rust everywhere. That's the old one. And there's the new one. If you're crazy about it, you could, you know, put some scotch bread on here or some sandpaper just to make it a smooth surface. You could even put some grease here so when you put the back of the rotor on, you don't get all that rust and just makes it easier to take off when you get to that point, but it's not necessary. So now we're going to put the new one on, push the piston back in, line up the brakes, and that's it. It's a really easy install. We're not going to show you how to do the other side because the reverse procedure for the um, driver's side front, and then we'll do the driver's side rear. And it's going to be the reverse procedure for that as well. So, before we put it on, it's just a good habit to just brake clean it. It's just going to get all the oils and stuff for like the shipping and packaging. There wasn't really much on this. You don't got to go crazy. Just on the contact points where the brake pads are going to reach. It evaporates pretty quick, so. And bam. That's how it's going to look. All right, so to push the caliper in, you want to get yourself a brake caliper reset tool. This is pretty much mandatory for any brake job you do. Um, you know, any car, truck, anything like that. So I'll link this down below. You could rent it at your local auto parts store, but if you do brakes often, this is something to have because it's for every vehicle to push these, um, cal these pistons back in the caliper. Um, I mean, this isn't really the right one for a dual piston, but it will work, it'll do the job. Go one at a time. So you pretty much just have to rotate it back in. So we're pretty much just pushing that piston back into sit into its proper spot. It's hard because this isn't the right caliper tool, but it's working. I'll show you real quick. I don't want to bore you, but see how this one's still farther out. This one's pushing in, so it's just a process. They have to keep going around and around and around and around until it sits flush, and we'll show you the finished results once we're done. What I meant by it's not the right one is that it's not pushing both pistons in at the same time, so you just have to do one individually. So this will still work, so I'll still link this down below, but just pushes that thing back in. There's so many different attachments for each size piston. This will work for your truck. It's just what I meant was that it won't push both pistons in, so you just gotta do double the work, but it's really not a big deal. So as you push this one, see it pushes it out. That's what I mean because I want to go in at the same time, so it's just going to be going back and forth until they're both flush. Alright, so we have the old brake pad here. You can see how these little shims are connected on that. As you can see, the new one. So this one has a center heat um, dissipation. This one, the stock one, has it to the side. So those must be good with these particular set right here. So those are going to go to the back. So you take these, and this faces out. This is out. Come on. So like that. So that's how that will sit. Now we just gotta set up these shims on this. So we got two of these kind of shims which go on the bracket, two for the other side, and you got four for each brake pad. So this pad's done. Now let's do another one real quick. This one like so, and like so. Now this will all be the driver's side, which we're working on right here if I get it on. Okay, so that's set, that's set. Now we just gotta put these little guys on. So since they were nice enough to give us new grommets, we're gonna pull the slide out. And I'm just gonna pull that off. Same with this one here. Put the new ones on. Just kinda catch onto that little lip right there. Spin it, it's good. We'll put the new slides in and we're gonna lube them up with some grease here, just so we don't have any sticking or seizing. So we wanna prevent that. So you make sure you wanna lube these up. They should already be on them because they're not exposed to the environment, so it should have grease on it to begin with. So we're just gonna put some on it. 
on there. And just rub it around. You don't need a lot because it's it's gonna spread all around. So you pretty much want to get on all metal contact points. That in there. Now the other half of the sleeve has to catch up on that so no debris gets in there because then you'll have the issue of seizing calipers and pins and it's a nightmare. So it's gonna sit like that. See how it's flush there? And then we'll do that same for the other side. And then we're gonna move on to reinstalling it. All right, so we're just gonna put this bracket back on first just to get out of the way. It's that 21 millimeter. So we're just gonna hand thread in first. This top one here. All right, those are in place. Now we're gonna tighten those down with the 21. And then we'll get to the next step. So now that this is in, we're gonna set up the brake pads. You're gonna to wanna, to, like I said earlier, just grease up all the metal on metal contact points so you don't get any squeaking or squealing or any kind of noises like that. And it will just sit in that little cavity, like so. And that just kind of sits on that. And then same with this side. And then on the inner side right here, the back side, it's nice to just grease up this because you're gonna have those pistons rubbing into this. So if you just smear grease all over, if we have enough in here, I don't know. Probably have to use another one, but just smear it, just so you have some kind of lubrication because these really dig into the back of the pads. And then we'll put this on, put those um, 13 millimeter bolts back on, and then this driver's side is done, we'll move to the rear. So we made it to the rear of the vehicle. It's pretty much the same thing. To remove the caliper, it, the only difference is it's a 10 millimeter bolt right there for the slide. 10 millimeter and then this is still the 21 so we're, we're going to loosen these up on top and bottom top and bottom and we'll get this out of the way and it's really easy anyone could do this save yourself some money we're going to link all this stuff in the description everything you need sockets um the brake job it's all most of it's on amazon so you can get all that good stuff there but save yourself some money being a mechanic and knowing how much place is charged you could do it for so cheap in less than an hour. It's only taking us a little bit longer because we're trying to film for you and make it very detailed as possible. So that's the slide. That's that 10 millimeter right there. We got two for each. Okay, I'll get that screwdriver and just pry this away. And then in the rear, it's always a single piston. Well, not always, but you know, if you get into like some sports cars and stuff like that, it's more than it's double. So these still had some good life on it. Definitely getting wear. So I'm really impressed with Dodge and their stock, you know, brake setup for 60,000 miles with the big tires. Trailer did today. You know, it's really been put to use, and it's still got some tread on it. But it is making some noises, and that's where I think their downfall is from the factory. They don't properly lube them, which is a big case with most manufacturers. You got a little bit of uneven wear. See right here and here? You got not a flush clean wear. That's interesting there. So you might have some warped rotors or something. But anyways, we'll get these uh, 21s off and we'll get it out of the way. That's an issue right there. This is the inner pad closest to the piston. Look at that wear. It should not be wearing like that. It should be completely grinded this color right here all the way through. So we definitely have an issue there. You can see it's over here and here. Interesting, very interesting, but I bet you it has a lot to do with the noise. So we're gonna uh, pretty much do the same thing, just hit the rotor off. You do have these locking things. You could just pry them off with a screwdriver. You do not have to reuse them. It's just to hold the rotor in place when nothing's applied. But once you put the new brakes on, it'll apply and push it down. So we just put the new one on. We did brake clean, of course. Look at all the, there's a little bit of probably loose paint on that and then a bunch of oil and stuff. It's just collecting there. So good, make sure to always brake clean these cheap enough to do just so you don't have anything stopping you from stopping no pun intended so we're just going to take these old clips off just remember how they sit so just going to put them on might be a little hard to get on because there's a layer of rust but there we go so we got that on take this one off you could use a wire brush to really clean them down but it's not really necessary unless you have a really difficult time getting these things on Okay, got that on. So now we're gonna put this back on and then when we put the um, 
pads on. We're just gonna lube up the contact points again, just so you don't have the metal on metal without any lubrication. Those are those 21s. Bottom one. Sorry we're running out of daylight. Jersey man, and winter time's coming. We started this literally about 30 minutes ago, and it was daylight, and now it's already freaking almost pitch black, man. So bear with us, we try and do the best we can with the installs, but working now full time, everything, it's just difficult with the timing and by the time we get home, lights, it's already dark time, so. Uh, one more thing we gotta do for this set before we wrap it up and put the pads on, is just push the uh, piston back in. This tool is the greatest thing ever invented. Sorry, I'm trying to let you guys see, but I don't have a surface. Really See so yeah, how it's just retracting back into place. And then of course once you, if you're not familiar with how brakes work, once you press the brake pedal, the fluid's gonna push that piston back on and push those um, pads onto the rotor here. That's how you stop. Let's put these pads on, we'll lube them up, whatever we got left in this little package. The brake job is done for the rear. Now we just have to do the passenger side. Um, it's pretty much they're all gonna be relatively the same. It's just removing the caliper, the pad, the bracket, the rotor, and re redoing the procedure. So this side's done, front's done. We just gotta do those sides. And we're gonna wrap up the video here because there's no sense of filming that. It's just literally the same exact procedure. It's just some tips is really just lube up everything, take your time, take a mental note of how things go so you don't mess that up. It's really easy to do. Save yourself, I don't know, brake jobs when I worked at Volkswagen was about, well, obviously it's a Dodge, but about like $300 for the front, $300 for the rear, so 600 total. Save yourself some money, do it yourself, it's really easy to do. If you guys really like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. All the stuff you need is gonna be linked down in the description along with the exact brake kit we bought. These are good for you know performance and really your day-to-day -day use, especially if you're daily driving this. This is a 2017 with 60,000 miles, that's a lot. Feel free to subscribe, it really helps us out a lot. All proceeds and everything goes right back to this channel. Give us a thumbs up, man. Until next time, peace.